So in this video, we're going to talk about the estimation of and the inference about the difference in population means. So we're going to look at, we're going to compare two population means. And usually a lot of times we'll try to ask ourselves, are they the same or are they different? And we'll see that in this example. So I will step through this a little bit faster. If you've done some of these hypothesis tests, you'll see it's really um, largely a lot of the same approach. So, okay. So in this example, I'm going to look at the case where we have unknown standard deviations. And this is certainly the most realistic uh, situation out there uh, that you would encounter because typically we just simply don't know what the standard deviations are. So in this case, we're going to use the good old student's t-test. Okay, so a few observations, a little bit of the background, and then we'll um, just do a quick example. So again, let's just try to uh, talk about the idea a little bit. So suppose we have two populations again, and those populations have unknown standard deviations. So maybe, for example, I'm comparing the salary of a teacher in the state of Texas to the salary of a teacher in California. So maybe I want to compare those two salaries, those two averages, for example, but I don't know the standard deviations associated with those. Okay, so what do we do in these cases? Well, we just estimate, 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 estimate. That's what we do in all of these situations. And of course, it's very natural. You go out there, collect data, and you use that to make an estimate. So we're going to compute the sample standard deviations, S1 and S2, of each of those populations. So recall I've got my little formula here to compute a sample average and also to compute a sample standard deviation, just to remind you of those formulas. And again, I compute these just using some software, so I'm not going to go through all of the details. What do we do? Well, what we're going to do to make an inference about that difference in the two means is we're going to use a t-test. And to do a t-test, we have to compute the degrees of freedom. Well, this big old formula that we'll use over here is going to be the degrees of freedom. And again, we're just using the sample standard deviations and the sample sizes from each of our populations. And again, we'll do a, a concrete example and fill some of these in. So all you're really going to do is just uh, compute the degrees of freedom. That's going to be one bit of work you'll have to do in these examples. You'll compute this test statistic using this formula as follows here on the right. And then we're going to have our null hypothesis in some version of uh, alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is going to be of the form we take one of our sample means and subtract, subtract away the other, I should say the mean of one population, not sample, the mean of one population minus the mean of the other population, that equals some value d sub zero. And that's going to be the specified difference. And I'll talk about this a bit more here in just a second. And just like before, we have these typical alternative hypotheses. You know, maybe that difference is larger than what we thought, maybe it's smaller than what we thought, or we just say, hey, it's not equal to that. So we've got all of these alternative hypotheses, again, just like in our other situations. And again, we have these corresponding rejection regions. The same thing as before, again, depending on the type of hypothesis you have, whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed. Etc. So again, everything at this point, if you're, if you're familiar with hypothesis testing, everything should feel largely the same. It's just, again, you're just computing degrees of freedom a little different and the test statistic a little different. Okay, so two very important remarks here. So a common null hypothesis is that the difference in the sample means equals zero. Well, if the difference in the sample means equals zero, well, that would mean that... If the, if the difference is zero, that would mean, hey, that those sample means are in fact equal, right? If that happens. So that's another way of stating that. Hey, the sample means are equal. That means the difference would be equal to zero. And again, I keep saying it, just one other remark. At the end of the day, all we're doing is just a bunch of number crunching. Please do not do this by hand, hopefully. Use, you know, a calculator, or some sort of a software package. All we're going to do is just compute that test statistic. We're going to compute this value uh, based on the degrees of freedom and our level of significance, and then we're going to make a conclusion. So here we go. Let's do the actual example. 
So here's our example. So suppose a teacher and her students are curious about whether a calculator gives an advantage on an exam. And I picked this one out because I'm genuinely interested. I've had this conversation with my own students. So, okay, they decide to, to test it. So one semester she teaches the same material, but at different universities. So, okay, so these are things already you should be thinking about in a quote unquote real life scenario, because you would have to consider, you know, does it make sense to compare these means? Uh, what about the standard deviations? You really need to be asking, you, uh, asking yourself these other questions. But, okay, so in one class she allows calculators, while in the other she doesn't. So let's assume she's teaching the exact same material, just one class gets the calculator, the other doesn't. Okay, so she collects some data. So in the calculator class, she has 23 students. The average is an 80.7, and she calculates that class variance as 49.5. And then we have the no calculator class. Well, there were 22 of them. The average is 78.9, and the variance is 60.4. And again, just to remind you, notice that these values, this would be my, uh, this would be my, This would be my N1 value, my N2 value. This is gonna be my, um, my average for the first one, my average for the second one. And then the class variance, that's gonna be my sample standard deviations squared. So just to fill all of those values in. So you can see how we're gonna start dropping in values into our formula. So again, the idea is, hey, we go out there, we collect this data. What do you say? Is it, is it, does a calculator give you an advantage or not? That's the question. Okay, so again, just to be technical, so we're gonna let U1 be the mean score of the students using a calculator, and we'll let this mu sub two be the mean score of the students not using a calculator. So our null hypothesis is, is gonna be that, that the difference of those two means equals zero which means the mean scores are equal, which would tell us, hey, there's no advantage in using a calculator. That's our null hypothesis. No advantage to using a calculator. And then it says, hey, you know, the means aren't, aren't uh, we're gonna say that the, uh, my guess would be, so if we look at this alternative hypothesis, mu, mu sub one minus mu sub two greater than zero, notice we could turn that into the statement that mu1 is greater than mu2, and I think that would probably be a lot of our guesses, right, for an alternative hypothesis. It's that the mean score of the students using a calculator is higher than the mean score of students not using a calculator. That, to me, would be a very normal alternative hypothesis because that's what I would think, right? I think most people would say, yeah, a calculator is going to give you an advantage. Okay, so there's our null, there's our alternative all we're going to do now <clears throat> is just compute this, this, uh, this value using our degrees of freedom, our test statistic, we're going to compare them. We have done very little at this point. So here's our formula for the degrees of freedom, and there's our table that we collected. So again, I'll, I'll fill this in just so it feels like, hey, we're doing something here, just to illustrate. So to drop all of these values in, I would have 49 over 23 plus 60.4. I want to make sure I copy all these down correctly over 22. So that's going to be this uh, the numerator. So I've now computed the, I've got the values for the numerator. And then again, it's just dropping all those values in. So 49.5, this is going to be divided by 23. And that's all over n sub 1 minus 1 or that's gonna be 23 minus one. We'll just leave it there without actually simplifying it. Let me make sure to put the square on there. We don't wanna leave that out. And then we'll do the same thing for that other term. This is 60.4 divided by 22, all squared. And that's gonna be divided by 22 minus one. And when I computed this, I got this to be equal to 42.12. Okay, so that's gonna be my degrees of freedom. And I think a lot of the examples we've done, let's just go ahead and pick our alpha to be equal to 0 0.05. So what we have to do is we have to, well, I won't even say compute, I will just say look up from a table. I would have to look up this value t. We've got our degrees of freedom as 42.12, and 
and our alpha is 0 0.05. So here's my table. Um, notice this t-test table has one tailed and two tails. We don't, uh, we're not using a two tail test, so let's forget about this bottom part. So do be careful about that. Um, and now our value that we were interested in, let's look at our degrees of freedom. So notice our degrees of freedom as long as uh, this uh, very first column. So we've got 42, so we're somewhere inside of there, right? We're somewhere inside of there. And our alpha value, we said that's equal to 0 0.05. Well, there's our alpha value, 0 0.05. So I just need to follow this down, follow this down, follow this down. So it's gonna be somewhere in between these two values. And again, you could use some, uh, some software. Um, I got this to be the value, what did I get? When I looked it up a little more exactly, it's 1.682. So again, what it says is, let me, let me look at this. If we look at our our rejection region now. So if we look at this, here's our value of 1.682. And again, it says if we look at this area that's left over, this area that's left over is 0 0.05. Now all we have to do is compute our t value now. And the idea is if t falls in here, if t, and this could keep going, so maybe I shouldn't even close it off. So the idea is if t is larger than 1.682, so we'll say this just keeps going and going and going. So if our t value falls in here, if t is greater than 1.682, the idea is we simply reject h0. And suppose our t value was smaller. If our t value is less than 1.682, then we'll keep. I always like to say we keep our null hypothesis. We don't discard it, is what we do. So let's just compute our test statistic. So here's the formula for our test statistic. Here's our information. So when I dropped all of those values in, again, I'm just using my table. So the, the averages, I had 80.7 minus 78.9. Now that D value, that was the difference in the two, and our null hypothesis said that that was equal to zero. And then we just divide by the stuff underneath the square root. So when I dropped those values in, that's 49.5 divided by 23 plus 60.4 divided by uh, 22. And I got this to be 0 0.813. And that tells me that my test statistic, maybe we, sometimes they label this T, I'll even call it TS for test statistic. You see that that uh, that as well. Well, our test statistic is falling in this. If it falls in this range, well, if it falls to the left of that value, that 1.682, if it falls to the left, this is where we keep our null hypothesis. So that's our conclusion. Since our test statistic 0 0.183 is less than that value we got from the table, which was 1.682. Let me say it more correctly. We fail to reject our null hypothesis. So at this point, um, it seems, so the conclusion is it seems a calculator, a calculator gives no advantage. So that's all there is to it. Really just some computations, really quite a few uh, computations, but after that, that's it. You're just comparing that test statistic you get to that value from the table, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So again, these are very useful situations because, I mean, I think you don't need a lot of creativity to really imagine that if you were out there collecting statistics or interested in a variety of situations, that you could really, th this sort of statistical test would, uh, would come in extremely useful.